Well, I think we're talking about travel photography. So I've got the old 10 tips, 10, 10 things you need to know, 10 to things to think about uh, before you go out on that next shoot. And uh, I, I think I want to begin with, uh, you know, I, I've been a convert to uh, leaving the big cameras at home and using the smartphone as my camera of choice for travel photography works really well. It uh, really helps when you run out the room the first thing in the morning, not to be lugging gear all day. Uh, the gear is still great. And uh, I, I, I love, love, love my Sony camera. And I love my 7200 millimeter lens particularly. Uh, but you know, when like I went to Paris, left the camera at home, only ran around with two two iPhones in my pocket and did really well. And I did the same thing in Japan. Uh, some of the stills maybe not as sharp, uh, but you could do really good work. And the video definitely is now just as good, I think. And the main thing is convenience. And that and the fact that when you walk anywhere, you're not threatening people with a big black camera, which is something that I've experienced many times. I've been kicked out of everywhere you could ever mention, ever imagine, except for a little Italy pizza parlor that I went to with Angela. Uh, we didn't get kicked out from there, right? So that was pretty good. They so, were actually very welcoming. Yeah, they were very nice. And the food, the pizza was really good, might I add. Um, so... I, I on my on my top 10 list, it was first leave the big camera at home. Uh, yeah, I heard from somebody yesterday who said, you know, I asked you this question before I went on a, a Alaskan cruise and uh, and I, I brought the Sony anyway, and I only used it about 10 percent of the time. I ended up using the iPhone everywhere because for travel photography, it's just a really wonderful tool. What are you missing out on? What couldn't you do? Well, you know, there's sports. I think you still need the big camera for sports and you still need the big camera for going on a safari if you've got the big lens. Aside from that, you're in pretty good shape. So first thing is to treat the camera like a professional camera, your iPhone, your Galaxy, your Pixel, whatever, treat it like a professional camera and you know, you just might get professional results. Um, clean the lens before you start your shoot, right? Um, how many people, because we're we're dragging the phones in our in our male pockets or in our female purses or whatever, and they're getting dirty. Well, start each shoot with a clean lens. Just have a cloth and wipe it down. Um, arrive to your event with a charged battery. You know, you're, you're scoffing at me right now, but think about your big camera and think about how you wouldn't dream of leaving the house with a battery that's at 10% or 5%. You charge it up before you go. And uh, you also make sure to clear your memory card or at least have a card with lots of room. So you also want to make sure that you have lots of room on your phone by going to the storage and checking it out. You only have a finite amount of storage and uh, there's nothing worse than getting the uh, the nag message that says you've run out of room. That's for and sure. we'll, we'll be talking about some backup strategies uh, in a minute. Um, let's talk about the most, uh, most important rule of, of photography period is timing is uh, you're going to get your best shots in the early morning or sunset magic hour blue hour whatever you want to call it. Uh, it you can look at any travel brochure and those pictures are taken at sunset it's just the way it is now you could do you could do decent shots during the day as well but just know you'll get your best shots when the color is at its best i have a video uh, posting this weekend from pismo beach a place that i believe angela has been to before and uh, because she spent a lot of time up in the central coast of california and we shot the dunes uh at right before sunset because at that time of the day the the uh the positioning of the sun creates ripples in the sand and it's very dramatic now if i'd gone there at 11 in the morning it just wouldn't have looked that great so timing again everything plan out your trip uh i i don't know if, where we're going this summer but let's say Let's say we're going to Badlands National Park, South Dakota, because I know someone who's going there. That would be me. So before you go, go on Google, do a few searches, see what people are taking pictures of, see what excites you. And then when you get there, first thing you want to do is go to the tourist office. Um, you know, th there are a lot of great pictures hanging at the tourist office, and it'll give you a pretty good idea of what's out there and what's available. 
ask the tourist office for some tips on where to go, when to go, how to go to get to these places. Sometimes, you know, sometimes they have these very unique angles that, you know, you've got to go on a back road to get to. They can tell you. Then before you even start shooting, scout, jump in the car, drive around, take a look, see what it looks like in the morning, in the afternoon, in the evening. I don't know how much time you have. If you have the time, definitely do the scouting. Bring a tripod with you. I think this audience probably all has tripods. Um, you know, a lot of people resist, but, you know, I'm really big on time-lapse photography and I can't handhold a iPhone for over a minute. And a time-lapse should be minimum 15, maybe 30, maybe 60. Uh, you know, time-lapse where you watch the world fly by at top speeds in the summertime, big clouds, rain clouds coming in looks pretty incredible. So a good tripod and you, you know, you can get a cheap, cheap, cheap tripod for a time-lapse. It's okay. Um, you know, the sturdier ones are better if you're in a windy area and you have a cheap tripod, it's going to go back and forth. So you want to get some with, you want to get one with some girth to it. I use a travel tripod made by Manfrotto. It's the, uh, element Mark II. I paid about 150 bucks for it. It fits in my suitcase. I love it. It's not super sturdy, but it does the job for me. Um, when I'm going to South Dakota this summer, I'll be bringing a bigger tripod that is sturdier. Uh, uh, patience, patience, patience. If you want to get the shot, you want it may take a while, and you know you you're just going to be standing there. And so, bring something to do. You, particularly if you're doing a time lapse, you got to let it roll for a long time. Uh, so obviously you, you you bring something to read or something, uh, but you you can't just turn the camera on and then walk away because somebody might steal your gear. You don't want that to happen. Bad weather. There's no such thing as bad weather. If you're going out this summer and you're shooting on the smartphone and you're doing your travel photography uh, and it rains, that's great. You've got a camera that is water resistant. I'm sure everybody here grew up with an SLR, a film camera or something like that, that if it got wet, it got ruined. Mm -hmm. With a with a, a smartphone, we don't have that problem. Any of the current later models are water resistant. You can shoot in the rain. You can shoot in a puddle. You can shoot in a fountain. You can take it on a kayak. You can take it in a canoe. You can go whitewater rafting. You name it. You can do it with the smartphone. And you know, get great, great results. So think about that. Um, backup plan. Uh, I spend every night in my hotel room backing up stuff because if you shoot everything on the phone and you lose the phone, you've lost all your work. Uh, open up that Milio app uh, before you go to bed and let the Milio app go to work. I'm sure you have a vault and we can talk more about vaults. I, probably everybody here has a vault. Uh, but open up the app and let it roll and also have a physical backup with you, whether that be the SanDisk iX, iXpand drive, which fits into the lightning port or the USB-C port on your Galaxy. That's a good thing to do. It's kind of hard to fit a hard drive into your phone. It doesn't really work, but um, there are there are solutions like that iXpand thing that I talked about. Um, and a bonus is that, you know, take a lot of pictures of old buildings and old monuments, but be sure to get smiles because nothing, nothing jumps out at people like uh, big smiles and eyes. Um, that really makes your travel photography pop. That's my little top tenor. Um, and I'm open for questions. Well, awesome. So Harold is asking, how does Mylio fit in with your travel photos, iPhone and vaulted library? So do you want to talk a little bit more about your setup, what you take with you as far as computers, external drives, any of that, or do you leave all that at home? I am unusual because I have a video series on YouTube and I am going to be out there shooting and archiving and editing. And I've got to bring my laptop with me. I never pretty much don't go anywhere without it, but I have my vault. It's over there. I have two vaults going at all times and I have, uh, I think, eight drives connected to the vault. So when I am sitting in a hotel room, I'm backing up via the vault, having the Mylio app open. Uh, what else is in there? And, and the multiple, because I've got the multiple phones going. I will also, 
airdrop them to the computer so that I have them there. And I also use Smug Mug as another backup. Uh, so, so they have auto backup via the phone as well. And I create galleries. So I'm I'm doing a lot of backup and then I'm generating a lot of content when I'm out on the road as well. So it's worth mentioning when you're when you're backing up from your phone, you've got my, the Milio app running and it's backing up to your, your vaults at home. You do need to have an internet connection for that. So and you, any in depending on how many pictures you've taken, how many megapixels you're shooting with, like I know our iPhones can shoot what forty eight megapixel raw files. We can raw files? Yeah, I don't think most people uh, are doing that, but yeah, I am. But you know, I'm I might be the, <laughs> the minority there. Um, but those files, the bigger the files, the longer it's going to take for those things to transfer over the internet. And if you're in a hotel that has lower speeds, that can certainly impact it. What I like to do is I, I also travel with a small laptop and a tiny SSD drive. And so I'll plug that SSD. I'll make that into a travel vault, which is a really cool new setting we have in the latest Mylio photos. Yep, something exactly like that. And you can turn it into what we call a travel vault, which means it's going to keep all of your originals of everything for the last three months on that little drive. So you can be backing up to a smallish drive while you're traveling with your laptop and just, you know, leave your phone open, your, your laptop open at night while you're in the hotel, and those will transfer over the, the local connection, and it'll be a lot faster than sending them to your home computer across the internet, you know, whether that's across the country or around the world. So that's, okay, so, that's what I do. So Angela just made news today, because I did not know about the travel vault. Uh, this <laughs> this is a new thing, right? It is. It's a, it's a new preset we have. If you go into the device quality settings, you add a new drive to your Mylio Photos Plus subscription. You go in there, add the new device, go into the presets, you tell it Travel Vault, and it will automatically set it to keep the last three months of everything. Okay. And you could set it specifically to that little SSD drive as well, right? Mm -hmm. Exactly. Uh, yeah, I, I don't go anywhere without multiple SSD drives. <laughs> I've got uh, several here on my desk. Here's another one. Let's see. Nice. So in a perfect world, I would have three on my desk. I also have the big spinning disk hard drives, but they're slow for video editing. And I need the faster SSD drives for video editing. Awesome. Let's see, Larry asked, do you use Mylio with your videos? Uh, yeah, they're part of the vault, right? And uh, so that's how I use them. Perfect. Let's see here. Now, um, you mentioned taking just your cell phone with you to travel, travel light. Multiple, um, yeah. I am torn on that because I still love my big camera, but my kind of solution is it, it really depends on who I'm traveling with. If I'm traveling with my husband or I'm traveling with non-photographer friends, the cell phone is perfect. Travel light, have that tripod, have your cell phone and go and be there and, and stay in the moment. If I'm traveling with other photographers, I'm going to have all my gear. <laughs> yeah. Well, th here's the difference. So flew to Paris, flew to Japan, I only had finite, finite amount of, of room to bring stuff, right? Sure. I'm going on a road trip this summer and <laughs> I have room to bring everything that I could possibly want to bring. You also have to worry about theft in your car. So yeah. uh, so that, that's the double-barreled sword. If you are to drive into San Francisco, you are told you can have nothing in your car. Nope. Nothing. And they've had an epidemic of of uh, smash and grabs where yeah. they just go and, and, and pound on the window and then they steal your camera back. Um, I was in a situation in, in San Francisco where I did go up and I had my drone in the car and I had my laptop and then I was and I checked out of the hotel and I was driving around for the day. What am I going to do? You know, and I, I had to go drive to someone's house and leave the stuff there and then go do do my business and then come back and get it because it's that bad. And I think it probably would be that bad at Yosemite and other national parks that when you have all that stuff in the car, you can't leave it there. So you you yeah. really have to to think hard about your what you're going to do. Yeah, I want to have my camera gear with me on the road, definitely. But... You have to shop it everywhere. I don't want to lose it all because, you know, my, my camera right now, I'm looking at it because I'm being filmed on my Sony A7 IV. A7 IV sells for $2,000. I have a lens on there, 2470. That's $2,500. That's $4,500 right there. And then most people might bring two cameras with them, right? And so yep. you're you're walking, you know, Target with 10K on yep. you at any, in any point. 
versus your phones, which are disposable. And, and I just don't think they're, um, I don't think as many people want to steal them uh, like they want to steal True. the cameras. Absolutely. So, so, so I mean, that's, that brings me to another tip that I've kind of come across is you don't want to have a camera bag that screams, I'm carrying $10,000 worth of gear. You know, if it's a little bit ratty, as long as it doesn't have a, an obvious camera manufacturer name on it, maybe it looks more like a backpacking backpack or like a sleek, like, you know, commuter backpack, something like that is probably better. And I've even heard of photographers putting, you know, gaffer tape and like kind of trying to make their camera and lens look a bit ratty and beat up just to defer people from wanting to steal it. I don't know. I think they see a camera and they see a large lens. And the first thing they say is, whoa, that's some camera you got there because they don't know. They, but, you know, I think a pancake lens would help because that's yeah. that's that's not as uh, that's not as uh, obvious um, right. but I, I wouldn't bring two big mirrorless cameras. So, uh, yeah. un unless you're going to Africa, uh, you know, I, if you're going to Africa, I'd get the Sony RX 10 four. That's what I would get. It has a built-in 24 millimeter to 600 millimeter lens. It's awesome. And then you just have to worry about one camera getting stolen and that one would sell for $1,500. But as right. far as the mobile stuff, I, I, I've got uh, two, two, two phones in my pocket and I usually have a GoPro and an Insta360 and I've got the drone and between all those mobile cameras, I can do a pretty good job. Yeah. Well, and you do your, your pictures are amazing. Oh, thank you. A few more pictures or a few more questions that have popped up in the chat. Darren asks, do you select images and videos to send to Miley or send all of your capture content and call later? I call later. Yeah. I, I can't keep up with, you know, I'm, I'm, yeah, I generate a lot. So I cannot keep up with uh, looking at thousands of photos every night in my room because I'm thinking about what I'm going to shoot the next day. I will give you a funny story. I was in Oahu, Hawaii for four days and I was shooting, 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 shooting. And on the last day, I said, I can't do this anymore. I have no idea what I've shot. I don't even know what I'm doing anymore because I've shot so much and I just had to stop, um, which was either right or wrong. I don't know. But, you know, I was in Hawaii, so I had a good time. Yeah, of course. Um, so Larry asks, what's the advantage of a travel vault over a regular vault? So that's a really great question. A regular vault holds your entire library. So everything that you've brought in over the years, um, historical images that you might have scanned, family photos, all of that, everything is in a regular vault. A travel vault is meant to only hold the last three months of your media. So it's not going to be your entire library. What that enables you to do is if you have a small library, you can have a regular vault on an SSD and travel with it. That's not a problem. And if your library is small enough to fit on that drive or you've spent a little bit of extra money to get a big SSD, you certainly can do that. But for most people, if you want to travel, you probably want to also be budget conscious, spend more money on the trip than you do on the gear that, you know, some of the gear that you're taking with you. And you maybe want to buy a one or two terabyte SSD instead of a four terabyte SSD. And you can't fit your entire library on that. So you want to have just those last few months. So that gives you, you know, the recent stuff you've been working on. So if you do have time to sit and play, you can do that. And then it backs up everything, all your photos and videos that you're capturing as you're traveling to that device. Once you get home, plug that into your computer at home or have that running on your local network and it will back up to your main vaults that have everything. Okay, let me let, let, let me do, uh, try this on you. So we're driving to South Dakota. We're sitting in Badlands National Park and I'm going to make a travel vault just for this 30-day trip, mm -hmm. okay? So for the 30-day trip, we're going to create uh, the summer 2023 travel vault so that uh, I'm constantly backing up uh, only that library, right? Okay. And uh, and I don't want it to expire, but what what you're saying is that I do that and I could do all the searches and have the stuff available on my phone to, 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 to and, and tablet and computer. But at the same time, when I come back, I plug that in and it will go into my main two vaults, right? So essentially so it's still going to be your normal milio nothing with the rest of your milio experience is going to change you're going to still have access to view the rest of your library in the milio photos app what it's going to do is just make sure you have original quality versions backed up on that travel drive while you're while you're traveling so you have those original quality ones with you if you have an internet connection those things are going to be backing up and quite possibly going to get home before you do also to your main vaults at home 
Okay. So, so by having the travel vault, um, it's also going to be backing up to my main vault while I'm on the road. If I have a good connection, which as everybody watching right now knows is highly unlikely in <laughs> many places we'll be traveling to certainly in Badlands national park. I do not expect to be able to upload thousands of photos at night while I'm sleeping. Right. Yeah. And that's where that travel vault comes in really, really handy. Uh, let's see here. Bill says, I was in Iceland in 2021 with five film cameras, including two medium format and one four by five. So now with just my mirrorless, I feel like I'm hardly bringing anything. I, that, yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of gear to travel with and some big gear. So yeah, I can see how the mirrorless would feel like a ton of weight has been lifted. Yeah. One year at the Consumer Electronics Show in Las Vegas, in my backpack, I had camera, tripod, microphones, drone, uh, lights. Oh, I was walking with them all day long. It was hell. It gets so heavy. And I, I've done it too. And it's, it's a lot. I've definitely pared down what I take with me. I usually try to take, you know, in, unless I'm going for a specific purpose that I need all the lenses. Like I'm just going to focus on, I'm going to have my mirrorless, one lens, one camera body, and then my phone is my backup. So there we go. Um, let's see, Harold. Yes. Can we please talk more about the travel vault, recommended size, et cetera? can plug into your laptop and then your desktop when you get home. That's correct. Um, so recommended size. Can, can I just say one thing? Let me sure. say one thing on SSD drives. Okay. A two terabyte is either $120 or $200. Samsung has the $120, but you want to be very careful when you buy these things because there's a slow SSD and there's a fast SSD. And when you get the slow one, it's slow. And uh, for somebody who, who generates a lot of video and is moving files, I was like, how am I, how is this taking hours? You know, that's not supposed to happen on an SSD drive until I, until I realized the error of my ways and I got the faster version. Now, if you don't have big files and you, you, you know, you're just doing three megabyte JPEGs, then you can get the cheaper version. If you have bigger files than that, spend the extra 70 bucks uh, and save some time. So that's what I have to say about that. Yes, definitely. Um, so as far as which size that you buy, that's really going to depend on the size of your library and how much you intend to shoot. Um, let me think here. So my- I haven't seen a lot of four TBs. I see one TB and two TB for SSD. So mine is yeah. four, but okay. it's, I think I paid 250 350 I can't remember how much. It was a little bit pricey, but- it's, it's this small. It's like, it's so it's teeny, teeny, tiny. Um, and it's a fast one. And I'm lucky enough that actually fits my entire library on there. So I can travel with that as a full vault if I wanted to, but once my library grows beyond that point, I can change that to be a travel vault and then just have the most recent stuff with me. Um, how do you make sure that the travel vault doesn't expire your photos? If it only goes for three months. Well, so it's, it's not going to expire anything. It's going to, it's not going to move or take anything out of the cache until Milio is sure it's backed up to at least two, two other places, then it can remove it from the cache. So Milio is very careful about deleting anything. We, we don't want you to lose pictures. We don't want to expire your images. Um, it's a place, you know, we want to make sure stuff is protected. So okay. that's, that's the first. Unlike, unlike our, unlike our friends at Apple. <laughs> who, who delete photos. If you delete a phone off the iPhone, it gets deleted from iCloud. Yep. Um, uh, Lori just sent us a, a, a link the, to, to a Seagate hard drive. And uh, whoops. Now when I did that, I lost me. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go back to zoom. Okay. Yeah, Lori, so how much is the hard drive? Tell us how, how big is it? Hang on here. So I just pulled up that external hard drives and SSDs. Um, let me just scroll down here a bit. Roughly it's $200, uh, for a two, two terabyte is a hundred dollars for a one terabyte is tends to be right. the average. Yeah. And not to plug it, but, uh, Costco, I know that they carry some of these, um, drives that are pretty good prices. Yeah. So. I usually get my Seagate drives at Costco. And then I think about my crucial off of Amazon, um, but it's worth noting that, um, Mylio photos is a partner with both Seagate and crucial. We highly recommend their drives. It's certainly not the only drives you can use with Mylio Photos, but we're pretty confident in their products. So just wanted to give you those links in case you wanted to check that out. Okay. They're all good. 
Yes. It's like two companies own everything, right? Is <laughs> it's it pretty Seagate, true. <laughs> Seagate and Western Digital are the two companies now? Yeah. Somebody has so. raised his hand. Somebody yeah, Larry, has raised his hand. Yeah. yeah, I just want to warn everybody, don't buy anything that you can't identify as a well-known manufacturer because there are a lot of bad stuff. There's a lot of bad stuff on Amazon and on eBay that looks cheap and looks like a bargain. If it's a bargain, it probably isn't worth buying. I, yeah, you've got a very good point, especially when it comes to storage. Um, exactly, storing your memories. Exactly. So whether that's a memory card for your camera or external hard drives to store stuff on, yeah, stick with brands that you've heard of that have really good reviews. If it's super cheap, there's probably a reason why. Okay, but again, it's two companies that own the hard drive world. Okay, so... Um, uh, Western Digital owns SanDisk, I believe, and mm -hmm. LaCie and Seagate owns G Master, and who else? Uh, but those are the, you know, basically every, if you look them up, if you see a brand, it tends to be owned by one of the big guys. And that's a good one. That's good. That's cool. Let's see here. Uh, Darren says, I drag a small cabin sized red suitcase around with all my gear, zoos, events, shows, et cetera. Folks look at me <laughs> and seem to think I'm crazy, but it saves your back. I 100% agree. Um, last year, I bought a small, um, I think it's a think tank brand rolling suitcase that I, is now my, my go to when I'm traveling through the airports and stuff. It's not something I'd want to roll around town every day if I'm going traveling, but to get through the airports and have all my gear and at least get it to the hotel room on the other end. Yeah, it saved my back tremendously because I used to load up everything in my backpack and then be in pain. I have a big rolling suitcase. Um, I forget the name of the manufacturer, but it's similar to Think Tank. It, I, I use that for my paid photography. I do portraits every weekend and I like to have everything on me at uh, because when you're on a paid gig, you never know, you know, do I want to go to my 16 to 35? Do I want to go to my 24 70? Do I, I have two flashes? I have two cameras. I have multiple lenses. I have filters. I've got everything in this bag and it rolls and it looks like a suitcase. I don't think it looks like a camera bag, which is a right. great thing. Yeah. yeah. My little one, it doesn't look like a camera bag, but somebody who knows the brand think tank would probably put those two things together pretty quickly. So I keep I keep a hand on it at all times when I'm traveling. Right. Angela in San Francisco, they would know. Yes. They would know. Yeah. All right. Any other comments or questions for Jeff? I'll just throw one out there. Oh, Jeff, wow. how do you decide where to go travel? Is it places you've been to before or new places? Uh, I, I wish I, I have a list in my head of the, all the places I want to go to and, uh, you know, and I hope to get there over the next 10 years for right now. It's pretty much, I'm working, I go somewhere, I come back with a whole bunch of material, I edit, and then I go somewhere else. This, uh, summer trip that has come up, I decided that I wanted to go to a photo workshop in Badlands National Park that just sounded too great. It's being taught by Eric Kuna, who works mm -hmm. with Kelby One and Russell Brown from Adobe. And I believe that Russell Brown is the greatest iPhone photographer in the world. And when I He's found amazing. out he was going to be there, I wanted to go to that seminar. So, yep. so then because I'm crazy and I like to drive, I always like to do driving trips. I just find them way more enjoyable. You see so much more. Mm -hmm. It's the really the only way to do photography is, is I mean, I'll, you can't drive to Paris. I had a great time in Paris and a great time in Japan, but I love to do a good road trip. And so, okay. Yeah. It's only 24 hours from my house, but that's okay. Cause I, now I get to go to Prescott, Arizona and Moab, Utah and Monument Valley. And I get to go to Colorado, Breckenridge and Boulder and, um, Cheyenne, Wyoming, and who knows where else. So, uh, so, it, you know, I wish it was more planned. And then I'm, I'm planning a Europe trip uh, for the fall and uh, I might go to New York. So there's a whole bunch of things. So I, I pretty much take personal stuff and and then uh, professional stuff and merge them together. We've got people to see in the East Coast. So I would like to go do that. But of course, I will be shooting the whole time as well. Yeah. So basically, you have a bucket list you're checking off. Yeah. It sounds like you're doing well. <laughs> yeah. 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 And then great. sometimes I go back and do them again. So the um, 
the episodes I've done in the central coast of California have been my most watched, except for the Oregon coast. So the Oregon mm -hmm. coast is my most popular video. And, but after that, I did two on Morro Bay and two on Pismo Beach, and they're, they're at the top of the list. So I went back recently and did some more because I figured, well, people might want to know more about the area. And I was really happy I did. So I shot a whole bunch in the Central Coast, and I'm currently editing those. So the Pismo, Dune, Pismo Beach Oceana Dunes will be out this weekend. Uh, Angela, have you been there before? Of course. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Isn't it one of the most I incredible Central places? I born and raised, so... Right. So this is the only place in California where it is legal to drive on the beach. And it's super fun. So if you have it, uh, we, it is recommended to do all wheel drive or four wheel drive. Oh, I've, I've done it with uh, my regular car. It's okay. Well, you have to be very careful of the tie. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I mean, that's the first thing, you know, it, it, in my top 10 list, we should go back and put in the tides because the tides are really important in places like yes. that. Um, you know, I started one of those drives where I got there at low tide, but by the time I was finished, it was hovering on high tide and I was watching the water come closer and closer and closer to the wheels. So it got a little scary. Uh, another place where I talked about the Oregon coast. So Haystack Rock in Cannon Beach is one of the most amazing. It's another giant rock like in Morro Bay. And it it attracts photographers from all over the world. And you want to check the tide tables because you get all these great tide pools at low tide that you won't see at high tide. And it's um, so it's very important there. Pismo Beach, they have caves that you can go in and photograph, but only at low tide. And it's very serious because if you're there in high tide and you're in, in the cave, you ain't getting out. I mean, you're going to be stuck in there with yeah. all the water coming in. So high, high and low tides, very important. Absolutely. And on the dunes, um, yes, you could drive all on the dunes for miles, but there's a when you get to the end, there's a part where no cars are allowed. And right. the photography there is unbelievable. And that's what the video for this weekend is about is the photography on the other side of the dunes. Uh, it's like going to Saudi Arabia. I mean, it's so amazing. Yeah, it's, it's very cool. And then going later in the day, or early in the morning to get the reason that you can see all those ripples is because you're getting the shadows. So when the light is low, you get more defined shadows. And that's where you can see all that definition and contrast. Because if you go straight up in the middle of the day, you're just you're not going to get that detail. So yeah. definitely go with those those prime shooting hours for photographers. Now, as we wait for more questions, I'm going to pepper Angela. Um, you just gave us some news about the travel vault. Is there any else, any other new things that we don't know about, about uh, the new Milio that you could uh, fill us in on? Well, we've got the new quick filters, which is a great way to quickly parse through your library, um, find certain groupings of images and narrow down results to find specific things. It works tremendously well. One of the things inside the quick filters is our new AI smart tags. We use computer vision to identify objects and all sorts of stuff in images, and you can quickly search those. Um, they're yeah, amazing. May I add that they're really, really good. I really like them. I'm finding <laughs> things in the search that I'm not finding at the other places. And I yep. spend half of my day doing searches. I've been coming up with pictures. I've been surprising people. Um, I found a picture of my wife in heels, and that's very rare. <laughs> and I sent it to her. And I said, look, you're wearing heels. And that was just doing a search for me that it turned out I was holding my wife in a certain way and her feet were up. So um, oh, awesome. I haven't seen that picture in years, in, in decades. So it was really interesting to see that. And I've come up with all sorts of stuff that Miley was finding in the search. So kudos to the uh, search meisters. Yeah, they've, they've done a great job and there's more great stuff coming. I was just looking through um, some of the specs for upcoming features and y'all are going to be very happy. I think you know, it's just it's just going to get better from here, and it's already pretty darn good. Um, another thing that I love is Quick Collections, which, Jeff, have you tried those yet? Yes. Awesome. So you can take a grouping of Quick Filters, and you can save it as a Quick Collection, so you can almost create different workspaces for yourself and get to certain groupings very, very fast, which I love. So those are those are some of my top things from, from the latest release. And if you haven't had a chance to play with those yet, I encourage it. Um, our last... Several weeks of coffee breaks have gone into each of those features fairly in depth. So um, if you miss those episodes, you can watch those in the community. Those recordings are available to you. So, yeah, 
Let's see if there's any other questions that have popped up. I'm not seeing anything. Uh, Darren, you've got your hand Doesn't up. Doesn't Fern have a hand up or something? I didn't see Vern's hand up, but I did see Darren's. Oh, okay. Darren looks like he put his hand back up. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, no, I just, I just put, turned it off because I forgot to do that the other day. Um, <laughs> yeah, no, the coffee breaks have been great over the last two series. Really good. Found out so much more about searching. Um, a question I have, I suppose, for, for everyone really is, like me, do you just uh, import everything, finally get around to sorting, and then maybe, or do you move across all the content that you like? I mean, I bring everything in, and then the the events or whatever I do like, I create the quick collection now that I've learned yesterday, or albums and things like that. Yeah, I just wonder, because mine looks quite bloated with lots of similar images. <laughs> um, well, so in my case, oh, you want to go up first, Angela? No, go for it. Oh, I just, in my case, I still go through Lightroom and I do the culling through Lightroom and then I, I, I make my selects and then I export the selects. And But I've got a lot of stuff to archive. And, and you know, when I go on a shoot and I'm shooting on multiple phones and uh, I make little folders for each phone and, and go through all that stuff. So that's how I do it. Angela? So I, you know, I bring up when I'm shooting, I, I bring everything into my Leo. Um, initially, I'll go through and I'll, I'll find a few that I, I'm really happy with right off the bat. And those are the ones that I'm going to flag or give star ratings to work with, possibly share. I don't do any in-depth culling unless something like me, you know, I accidentally took a picture of the ground as I was walking or something like that. I'll delete those right away. But I don't do any other in-depth culling for at least a week or so, kind of give my, myself a chance to marinate on the pictures a bit and get a little bit of emotional distance from it. And I can be a little bit more obje objective as I'm looking through them as to what's really good and what's, yeah, okay, maybe that wasn't wasn't so great. Um, and do my culling a little bit later. And I find that even going back to some stuff, I, I try not to be too harsh on my culling because mm -hmm. there's things that I can go back to from a month ago or a year ago, 10 years ago. that I'm like, how did I not see that? That's actually a really good picture. <laughs> So and I, our tastes and how we compose things changes. So don't be too harsh with your culling either. And I totally agree. And what, what I've discovered recently with a lot of the new AI type um, editing uh, software, the, the post-process software, is I've gone back to some images like with Topaz that were really mm -hmm. slightly blurry, or slightly out of focus or, or not sharp and cleaned them up, you know, from 10 years ago. And they look amazing. So... Yeah. Um, you know, I think we benefit now from the, the technology that we've got in post-processing apps and, and you find some real gems. So yeah, I keep everything. <laughs> I, I bet that I we, we as photographers could go back through stuff we shot five years ago and just look at the reject pile and make award-winning photos out of them all. <laughs> a, a lot of them, right? A lot of them. So very true. <laughs> yep. Yep. Thank you. Absolutely. Thank you both. My pleasure. All right, any other questions before we wrap up for today? All right, well, I wanna thank everyone for coming and I hope you enjoyed this talk about travel photography. I know that, I think it was Larry who said he's got a trip coming up to Wales. And I think this, hopefully these tips are useful for you. Anybody else who's got summer plans or into the fall, all of the tips that Jeff shared today are gonna to be super helpful. I also wanna thank Jeff for being here. I encourage you to go check out his Photo Walks TV YouTube channel. Some fabulous stuff. You can check out the Central Coast and the Cannon Beach that you talked about. We've even done a series here in San Diego, which was a lot of fun. Um, and thank you, Lori, for um, adminning and helping out in the chat and being here. And I want to wish everyone here a great day. Jeff, any last words? Uh, just thanks for having me. Thanks for uh, making my searching life less painful with the new with the new build and uh um just th thanks for everything yeah right well that's a great way great place to end thanks again and we'll see you next time bye everyone bye bye thanks team